Hi, my name is Robert Kovac from Hasso Plattner Institute, and this time I am presenting Trustulator on behalf of all my co-authors. In this short teaser, two designers are using Trustulator to create a somewhat uncommon looking playground swing. As you can see, the key design element here is a string. Trustulator allows designers to tune the dynamic behavior of the swing and also helps to physically build the device from welded steel. But let's start from the beginning. In my research agenda, I have been focusing on the question how to create large-scale objects. Starting from static structures, such as the pavilion that we built using TrustWeb, and more recently in Transformer, we have been creating mechanisms that produce specific movement paths, such as this animatronic T-Rex. Based on this, I was now wondering how to make machines that could be operated by human power. Because if you look more closely, Transformer is powered by a 2000 watt compressor that is comparable to the power of 15 grown-ups. Pretty much on pair with the related work by Koros et al. that generates mesmerizing mechanisms, but also uses surprisingly large motor to power even smaller installations. So why are these devices consuming so much power? Or maybe better to ask, how does an actual cheetah run so efficiently? If we look closer at the cheetah's anatomy, we find that there are elastic tendons connecting the muscles to the bones. These tendons serve as mechanical energy storing devices, or springs. This enables the cheetah to recycle large part of the energy during the motion, therefore to run extremely efficiently. With Translator, our objective was to create human-scale, human-powered machines, such as the playground equipment I showed you earlier. However, it quickly became clear to us that the kinematic approach won't be sufficient, but we need to take energy into account. Translator assists this process in three aspects. It allows non-engineers to create devices that reuse energy by embedding springs into the design. It helps to fine-tune the motion by adjusting the amplitude, tempo and effort parameters. Finally, it also assists the fabrication process of the welded steel structure. Let me now quickly walk you through Translator's workflow. These two designers were tasked to design a swing for a dinosaur-themed exhibition. They started the design by creating the shape which will be made of welded steel truss. After they are satisfied with the rough shape, they enable motion by exchanging certain edges with springs. Translator highlights when a moving part was created. After defining the kinematic function, they indicate the child's seating position. Translator then responds by running its simulation engine and returns this three-layer curved path above the user's head, indicating the amplitude of the movement for three age groups. They replay the animation by clicking on this motion path. They are concerned that the dinosaur's head would reach down far enough to hit someone, so they decide to reduce the amplitude by grabbing the handle attached to this motion bar and drag it inwards. Translator in turn runs its optimization engine and returns a stiffer set of springs. Our designers are now satisfied with the new amplitude, however, they find that the motion might be slightly too fast, as the tempo widget also indicates. They cycle through the three offered options to make the ride more comfortable. Translator just added an additional weight to the top of the head in order to lower the eigenfrequency of the device. Happy with the new tempo, now they sadly notice that the effort widget turned too hard, meaning that it might take too long to set the device in full swing and children might lose interest. This time, our designers decide to add the twist to the mechanism by adding a second seat for another child. This, as a result, reduces the effort to swing and they will be also challenged by having to synchronize their motion in order to hit resonance. 
Finally, designers happy with their results, hit the Fabricate button and head over to the workshop. Let me now explain how Tracillator assists the fabrication process. As you see here, Tracillator generates a set of custom stencils that are produced using a laser cutter. These stencils are then used to mark the incidence points on the node spheres where the tubes will connect. To hold the structure in place for welding, we have designed these temporary connector pieces. They hook into the holes while their other side acts as a strong cantilever spring that sticks into the tubes, holding them together for welding. This is all in nutshell what Trustulator enables us to do, but let me also briefly explain how the computation is happening in the background. So just to recap, let's look at this simple bobbing rider example. The user only interacts with the high-level experience attributes, the amplitude, tempo and effort. While Tracillator tunes the mechanical properties of the device, the stiffness of the spring, the mass, while the damping remains constant. The model is being created using Tracillator's SketchUp plugin. This model is then being transferred as a JSON file to Tracillator's simulation server. The server translates the model into a system of differential equations and solves them with a range of parameters in parallel worker processes. When a suitable spring configuration is found, the server then returns the simulated sequence to the front end. To find the best combination of springs and masses, Tracillator samples this nonlinear parameter space by first varying the stiffness of the springs. After finding the approximate spring constant, it runs another batch of simulation now with varying the mass of the device to optimize the eigenfrequency. It repeats this process for every spring in the mechanism and returns the best matching solution to the front end. So this process is repeating every time in the background whenever the user changes any of the high-level motion attributes, for example, the amplitude. To validate if our simulation is returning realistic results, we have mounted three accelerometers onto our physically built dinosaur swing prototype. We have recorded the frequency response of the structure was giving to push and pull impulse. We have plotted the results in the frequency domain. The green line here represents the measured data, while the orange line indicates the simulated results. We can see that the simulation is resembling the measurements closely, therefore we can exclude systematic errors in our simulation. This workflow enabled us designing a series of spring-based equipment, not only for playgrounds, but also sports equipment or artistic installations with dynamic movement. To conclude this talk, I would like to show the path how we arrived to this research project and where could it potentially lead. I just told you about Trustillator a system that considers forces and motion. This is the last out of the four projects of my PhD on large-scale fabrication, which started with Protopiper, a device that allowed users to create large-scale mockups. Then, with TrustWeb, we included forces into the equation to allow users to build not only large, but also load-bearing structures, such as the pavilion that you might have seen at Kai, then I switched to exploring movement. Transformers supported users in building large kinetic structures, but at the expense of the aforementioned ginormous compressor. And now Trustillator brings it all together in a system that allows building devices that consider motion and forces at the same time. All in all, I think about this line of work as democratizing engineering by embedding domain knowledge into software systems that enable building larger objects than pure human intuition would naturally allow for. Thank you for your attention and happy to take your questions.